All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> uh, so at this point, you should have, I think everyone has reset their machines, or I reset your machines for you. Uh, you should be able to log in to that machine as student with a password of student. We do have a couple of instructors roaming around the room, so if you have uh, an issue, take a look around for some of them. Uh, Chen in the back, Adolfo over here on the side, Rob should be around here somewhere as well. Uh, but uh, you know, feel free to talk to them if you have issues with something not quite working. If you do have a question or, or something you need me to comment on, you know, feel free to get my attention as well. Um, so before we uh, get started with introductions, and I, I want to take a look at and show you guys what the network looks like and, and what our machines look like so you have a better understanding if you haven't been to one of our uh, courses today. Um, I'm going to put that off for just a second because we want to get Packstack started. Uh, and that will take five or six minutes or so. And so we'll, we'll start that process first. And then I'll go back and do uh, introductions and show you what the classroom looks like and, and things like that. Uh, oh, so the, the question is, what session is this? This is the L3 agent, the, the Neutron L3 agent. Oh, oh, OK. It is hands-on, absolutely. So this is uh, actually part of our new course, uh, which is the uh, Neutron Networking with OpenStack Enterprise, no, Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. Um, so it's all designed as part of our larger two-day course that we just released. So it is definitely hands-on. I want you all to, if you're not sitting in front of a computer that we have set up, please sit in front of one. Speaking of which, uh, I'd like to thank Dell for giving us these laptops to use during these uh, sessions that we've been doing. Uh, they've been very generous uh, to, to help us with that. They actually had some t-shirt coupons, uh, so if you are interested in a t-shirt from Dell or, or just would like to thank them for uh, having us here, yeah, they, they have the little, it looks like this, yeah, stop by the Dell booth. So there, there are some back there if you're interested, come by and see me. I think we have a few more that you could uh, take as well. Uh, anyway, so let's get started. I want you to log in at this point. On the desktop, you should see a PDF, something like 6-L3 agent or something. I can't remember the exact name, but uh, it should bring up this practice implementing the Neutron L3 agent. Uh, and this is designed as a workshop, so I want you guys to do the same stuff that you see me do, so we're going to do it together. We want to walk through this. Uh, and, and get things working. And then before, uh, again, like I said, before we go into too much detail, I want to get you actually started. So open up your PDF, open up a terminal. So if you haven't opened up a terminal in a while, go to Applications, System Tools, and down to Terminal. Now, step two in your PDF says open up a terminal and look at the host number. You will all have a host number. It should be less than 25, right? And we tried to make it or organized at least a little bit. Uh, but you will have student at host X. Now, in our documents, we describe that as an X. It's a little italicized X. Wherever you see that, you need to put in your number. So remember what your number is, right? And we should, uh, at least on this side, I think we start at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, we do the same thing over here. We actually have split the, the networks. So we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, et cetera. All right, so that host number where it says host 1, host 2, host 3, that number is really important. I want you to remember it <clears throat> or write it down. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is SSH over to this server x-a. So open up a terminal. SSH root at server x dash a dot example dot com. Now, mine is zero. Yours will be something different, so don't put zero in there. All right, I want mine to be mine. It will ask you for a password. You're going to type in Red Hat, all lowercase, all one word. All right, then you should be on this virtual machine. Again, I'll describe the scenario in just a second, but let's edit the answers.txt file because we want to get that pack stack running uh, while we're talking. All right, so open up the file. We are going to find the L3 agent. So I'll just search for L3. 
and that's a capital L3. So config neutron L3 hosts. We're going to type in uh, an IP address, 172.25.x plus 100. So you're going to have to do some math. I know it's hard. It's late in the day. But take your x, add 100 to it, and you'll get the number. I'm 0, so I have 100. If you're 1, you're going to have 101. If you're 23, you're going to be 123. The, which, uh, uh, you're right, so in previous sessions, there were some things that were already set. This is one of the sessions where this has not been set. L3 agent has not been configured, yeah, yeah, that's good. L3 agent has not been configured, so you have to add this manually, unlike you may have seen before. Now, the benefit <clears throat> that I see here, if you will notice, if you scroll up or down your screen, you'll probably see an IP address that already has something like you should put in there. All right, so I see a 172.25.100.10. You can copy that down here, but notice instead of 10, it's 11. The local machine is 10. We want to deploy it on .11, on a different machine. We're going to call it server x-b. So we're deploying most of the OpenStack stuff on server x-a. We want to deploy the Neutron L3 agent over on server x-b. Okay, make sense? All right, so now that I've got that IP address, uh, let's just double check that we have a bridge called BR-EX. So that's the external bridge. We need to make sure it's there, which I, I do already have that part. And let's see, we'll just make sure we're using GRE. Uh, if I look for, let's see, where is it? There we go. OBS, in fact, if I search for OBS underscore T, all capital. It shows me my OBS tenant network type is GRE, OBS tunnel ranges is 1 through 1,000, and the interface is ETH1. Oops. Oh. All right. So uh, that looks good. So really, I just had to change that one IP address, and everything else was done for me. All right, so at this point, save the file. And we're going to run pack stack, and then I'll go back and describe some of the other useful things. Okay, so pack stack, dash dash answer dash file, slash root slash answers dot txt. And let it run. And we've had have, we have had a couple of instances where pack stack did not complete successfully. If that's the case, if you get an error and it shows up in red, rerun it and see if that helps. All right, so sometimes there's, there's a timeout issue. We're running on some relatively small VMs and, and and right, if that doesn't work, switch to another laptop. That may fix the problem, too. Uh, that has worked in the past, too. Uh, all right, so anyway, uh, while this is going, let me go back and describe uh, a couple of things. First of all, my name is Forrest Taylor. Uh, this is my first OpenStack Summit, actually, so I'm excited to be here. Uh, it's been really great. Uh, I am a, uh, the cloud curriculum team lead uh, for Red Hat, so I, do, I work on a lot of the cloud curriculum stuff. Rob in the back is uh, one of my cohorts. Uh, he's been working at Red Hat for quite some time. He also is working on our curriculum. And Adolfo and Chen are back there. Adolfo is new to our, our team. Uh, Chen is also new to a different team within uh, our Red Hat training. Uh, he doesn't know much OpenStack. So you can talk to him and, and explain all sorts of good stuff to him. He'll, he'll, uh, he needs some help. <laughs> all right, anyway. Uh, so the machine that you see in front of you is uh, a physical machine. We have two virtual machines that are running on there, server x-a and server x-b. Uh, and those machines, uh, well, so server x-a has been configured with OpenStack already. We ran pack stack, we saved it in an image, and then we can reset between sessions. So that's what we've been doing. So it's already configured at least minimally as an OpenStack server. And it's all in one. What we're doing here is we want to take the L3 service and start it over on a different machine. We want to use that as a server that's running somewhere else. Now, it actually wasn't running yet, uh, as was mentioned here. We're, we're not actually running an L3 agent at this point, but we are going to deploy one now. It's going to be on server B. Uh, and so the, the idea here is we're trying to show you uh, that, first of all, it can be done on a different machine, right? You don't have to have everything in one. 
Uh, you can run it on multiple machines, you know, on a different machine. You can have your L2 agent somewhere else, your L3 agent, your DHCP server. Those can be run on different machines if you want to. Uh, and that's what we're trying to show here. <clears throat> so uh, let's see here. Uh, we're still going through uh, Packstack. And again, if you have issues, try rerunning Packstack uh, or ask for some help from one of the guys uh, around. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right, so the question is L3 agents, do they need to be running on your compute nodes? Yes, yeah, so you should, normally you would have your L3 agents running on all your compute nodes and that makes life simpler. Yes, absolutely. On your neutron, so on your neutron server, you don't have to have the L3 agent. It can be on a different machine entirely if you want to. You don't have to have the L3 agent running on the machine that's running the, the Neutron server. It can be off on somewhere else. So, but it still needs to communicate with the Neutron server, right? It has to communicate with it, but it can be running somewhere else as long as it can communicate back and forth. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yes. Uh, so the question is, do you, if you're using ML2 plugin, do you still need those agents? Yes, you still need the L3 agent running somewhere, or you ought to. You don't have to necessarily have it, but uh, if you want networking to work, you still should have your, uh, your L3 agents running somewhere. And the L3 agents can, this is where you can tell it which plugin to use, right? Whether you want the uh, uh, ML2 or, you know, well, on the Neutron server anyway, you tell it where. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, so if you're using Open Daylight with OpenFlow uh, and OBS, do you, still, are you, do you still need the L3 agents? I think, hmm, uh, <laughs> that's a complicated scenario. <laughs> we may have to talk about that uh, offline a little bit. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah. We'll take it offline. Uh, let's do some more discussion on that. Um, anyway, so uh, at this point, my L3 agent looks to be good, right? I, I get the green light done here under finalizing, uh, and I see a little bit of output from my pack stack. Right? And pack stack, if you haven't used it before, is just a simple command line way to deploy OpenStack. Right? And, and you can use it to redeploy stuff like we just did. We said, let's do an L3 agent. We hadn't done it before. Let's put it off on another server. Uh, and it did it for us. OK, so <clears throat> once we're done with the pack stack command, I'm going to open up another terminal. And we want to get to server x dash b. All right, so we're going to do a lot of this over there because we want to make sure it actually worked, right? Did it really deploy on server X dash B? I don't know. Let's see. So SSH root at server X dash B. All right, remember your X is different than zero. All right, put in your number, but root at server X dash B. So X is your number. Correct, exactly, yeah, so the, exactly, right, right, we had .11 as the place that we're going to deploy the L3 agent. It was, uh, in the other places, it was .10, which is server x-a's IP address, yep, yep, that's exactly right. So in Packstack, we told it, install L3 over on the server x-b. All right, so let's, let's make sure. Well, first of all, well, what have we got here? Let's just do an IPA, make sure that we got the right IP address. So I see in if 0 I have a 172.25x.11. That's the IP address. Uh, well, actually, that's not the IP address we put in. That's our public IP address. Uh, but notice if 1 is the x plus 100.11. That should have been the IP address that you put into Packstack right there. All right, now we have two networks in each of these virtual machines. 
to NICs anyway. Uh, we have a public network that we use, right? ETH0, 172.25x.0. And we have the 172.25x plus 100.0 uh, network as the ETH1, which is our private network, right? And that's the kind of the, the back channel. That's the back end, the management layer. Uh, all right, so that's, that's where we've deployed OpenStack already. It's listening on the ETH1 interface. All right, so that looks like the right IP address. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so normally uh, the question is do you have um, your controller node going out through the internet right? or out through a public network of some sort. Uh, yeah, normal, well, assuming you want actual public access you know, out, uh, at least outbound, um, yeah, that's, you would have the controller node or, or at least one of the nodes have access out to the internet uh, and that's where the floating IP addresses come in and you can push it out to that path as well. Yeah, so that's normally how things are set up. Okay, so on server x-b, let's run openstack-status. Now OpenStack-status checks to see if there are any OpenStack type services running or installed. And then it shows me what is actually up and what is down. So for instance, you'll see that the Neutron server is inactive and disabled on boot. What does that mean? What's the difference between inactive and disabled on boot? Anyone have any thoughts on that? What is the difference? Yeah. Inactive means that it is not currently running, right? The service command, if you've done Red Hat stuff before. And disabled on boot means it's, if you reboot, it's not gonna come up, right? Check config uh, on a Red Hat system will show you that as well, right? So that tells you, is it running now? And is it supposed to run when I boot up? Um, so, you know, if you've done things manually, this is a good way to check to make sure that the service is both running and it will run when you boot up the machine. All right, so Neutron server is not running. That was actually expected, all right? We did not tell it to install the Neutron server over here. We told it to run the L3 agent. That one looks good. Now, there's no enabled on boot there. If there's nothing there, it means it was enabled on boot, right? It just tells you if it's not enabled on boot. It also installed, notice down here, the Neutron Open vSwitch agent. We're using OVS. Uh, as part of this, and so it installed the agent for us. And we'll take a look at the configuration file here in just a second. Uh, and it also installed Open vSwitch and the message bus. Right? So the Neutron server is running on server x-8. Right? So it's, it's running on the first, in fact, all of the other services are running there. We just did the L3 service over on server x-b. Is that for a server We need a server running, yes, you have to have a server running, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise the agent is of no use. All right, so <clears throat> yep, that looks good. So we've got the L3 agent over here. Uh, and in fact, you could have done run the OpenStack status command over on A, and you would see all the services that are running there. Yeah, question. You could, absolutely. And what, in fact, in an earlier session, that's exactly what we did. We, we moved the Neutron server over on server B. Uh, Correct. And you could, absolutely. But you don't have to. Right, so all, this is just really to show you that you can have it on a different machine. Now it may be better if you, so uh, it, it really depends on your policies. Uh, is your company more about having it on a different de dedicated machine because it may be loaded down or other things? You might want to split it out. Uh, we will get there. Uh, we'll, we'll get to what is L3 agent. Well, what does it actually do? Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, all right, so let's see here. So from server B, what I want to do is to copy the Keystone RC file. And that's a file that has some credentials for us so that we can run some commands from the command line. So we'll copy the, let's see, server from server x-a slash root slash keystone rc underscore admin. We'll copy that to slash root. Oops. 
And the password is Red Hat. So once I have the Keystone RC file here, I need to source it. And now I have my credentials. So now I can run some commands that will be able to let me into the OpenStack stuff. All right, so we'll get to that in just a second. But check config, pipe it into grep, neutron. Let's see what services we have and which ones are actually turned on. Uh, so you'll see the L3 agent uh, is the important one at this point. All right, that one is actually turned on. Uh, we have the open vSwitch agent as well. And then there's something called the OVS cleanup, uh, which does some cleanup when we first boot up and, and go down. Uh, so that, again, is what we expected to see. Let's see if the Neutron L3 agent is actually up. So service Neutron L3 agent status shows it is running. Now that we have the PID, the process ID number, we can do a netstat command to see what it's doing. So netstat T U P L N, see if it's listening for anything. Put in that PID number. Uh, oops, we need to grep for it, of course. All right, PID number is going to be different on your machine than mine, so don't put in 3362 unless yours is exactly the same. But from the Neutron L3 agent status, I see the process ID number. Grep for that when you do your net stat. Now, if I drop the L, all right, right now there's our, our, there are a couple of connections for that service, but it's actually not listening, really. It's not one of those RPC services. It's waiting for something to connect to it before it starts up and, and starts transferring data. All right, and let's see, next, We'll just take a quick look at the log. So var log neutron l3 agent dot log. Now when you're troubleshooting, it's really important to know where the log files are. Well, the l3 agent has its own separate log. So we can take a look at some of the things that it has here. I see a bunch of info messages. I, I do see one error here, which is a, a known error. It's looking for this group key called firewall underscore driver. It couldn't find it. Uh, it just continued on, though. All right, so there's my log. So if I have an issue with the L3 agent, this is where I, the first place I want to check is look in my logs and make sure uh, that I don't see something there that's, that's obviously missing or something that's going wrong. And finally, let's take a look at etsy neutron L3 agent dot any. And let me scroll up a bit. And in fact, let me just do less. That will be easier. Um, so this is the uh, agent file. There is, notice, a debug option. So if you're really having troubles and you think it's the L3 agent, you can enable debugging. Uh, debugging can produce lots of logs as normal. So that's something you may want to uh, flip on for a while and then turn off once you're done with it. Hey, question. From the Horizon interface, you're talking about deploying it or, or checking the status or? Oh yeah, so all the activities of creating a network and subnet and all that stuff, you can definitely do on Horizon, absolutely, yeah. Um, well, uh, check the status for instance or <laughs> run some commands, so the standard admin things. But most of the, if you're dealing with the OpenStack networking stuff, yeah, you can do it all, uh, at least almost everything you can do from the command line right from Horizon. And it's designed that way. We're supposed to be able to do everything there, too. Yeah. Uh, if you have an issue, Rob will help you, or Adolfo will come and help you, or one of the guys in the back. All right. Um, so let's. Go down a bit further here. We will, yeah, yep, we will talk about L3 agent here in a second. Um, let's see. Uh, what do we have? Oh, yes. Namespaces. Oh, yeah, someone mentioned namespaces before, and uh, I don't think we ever got to play with it. Yeah. Yeah, so we by default use namespaces. 
Uh, and if you haven't played with namespaces, that's something you ought to try. It's actually pretty cool to see how namespaces work. The, 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 the reason that we use namespaces is that we want to be able to have IP addresses that are the same, exactly the same IP address for two different virtual machines without getting crossed over, right? without having issues. Uh, network namespaces allow us to isolate all of our network stuff into a namespace, into a, uh, an isolated bucket where we can't get out, where, where things don't get out from there. And so we are using by default network namespaces. Uh, and in fact, if you want to take a look at some of the network namespace stuff. Oh. Uh, the router, um, can you route between two different namespaces? Uh, you can route as long as you go out and then back in. Uh, you can do that, but normally what happens is, is OBS or, or Neutron stuff will take care of all of the routing stuff for you. But you, you absolutely can go out from one virtual machine and into a different one uh, using namespaces, yeah. Which seems strange, but <laughs> it's, you, no, right? Yeah, you absolutely need a router to do that. You need something to to handle all of those requests. Correct. You, you need to have some sort of floating IP or or something like that that allows you to get out entirely and then come back in through a different one. Correct. Yeah, and then and then that's when Neutron will take care and and Open vSwitch will take care of all of the. It's not, not going to get across. Yep, exactly, exactly. OK, uh, let's see. Let me go back to my uh, any file here. We're using the bridge, uh, the external network bridge called br-ex. Uh, so again, that's where the floating IP addresses come in. They go out through this bridge. We're using a certain port, 9672 for the metadata port. Uh, we have all sorts of other uh, options that are listed here. Um, and let's see, uh, we already did the logs, all right. Yeah, we already did that, all right. All right, so coming back here, and someone asked, you know, can we do the, this Neutron stuff from, uh, from Horizon? You absolutely can. Um, neutron net dash create, so we're gonna go through and create a network and create a subnet. Uh, and get a router and get all of that cool stuff that you can do with uh, software defined networks with Neutron. All right. So, Neutron Net Create. And oh, we're going to use dash dash tenant dash ID. Let's see if that's going to work. Uh, there we go. And you'll notice um, that I, I can actually tab complete. This is one of those cool things that you can do once you install Neutron. Uh, it will create some bash scripts for you that allow you to do tab completes on options and sub commands and other things like that. And so you'll notice that if I do a dash dash tenant or T, hit the tab key twice, it shows, well, there are several that start with T. If I add an E, hit tab, I get tenant. If I add a dash, hit tab, I get the whole thing, right? So tab complete can be really convenient when you're typing on the command line. All right, so use the services tenant. We're going to call it external one. And we're going to make this an external router. Now, the, the interesting thing here is we need a double dash with a space around it. Actually, I think it will work with dash dash router external. It probably works either way at this point. Let me see if that will work for us. <clears throat> uh, yes, it did. So you can do it dash dash space, or it used to be you have to do it that way. Now, now you can do a dash dash router colon, colon external equals true. And I, I knew that worked because I see this router colon external in that output that shows true. So this will create a network that is allowed to go out to the real world, right? Or, or out as far as I let it go out. That's the real trick to get it to uh, have a network that is external, right? We call that an external network. 
And normally when we have an external network, we want to assign that network to a router. And then the router will use that external network as a way to get out. Basically it provides a route to get out through uh, the internet or whatever thing we're allowing, allowing it to get out to. All right, so we have an external network. We want to create a uh, subnet. So neutron subnet, they said they were gonna bring the new cable here. All right, subnet-create. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put it in the services tenant. Gateway is going to be 172.25.x.254. All right, so that's actually my machine up here. Uh, so you guys can get out through it. And if we actually had some sort of internet co connection service, uh, you could actually get out to the internet. Uh, we don't because we're isolated here, but uh, that allows me to tell it where to get out to. All right, and again, use X instead of zero like you see me do. Uh, so we got the gateway. Let's see, we want to disable DHCP because we don't actually have the DHCP server running at this point. Uh, that was one of the things that I, I was going to present. Uh, disable DHCP, and we're going to have our allocation pool start at 172.25x.25 and end at 172.25x.34. I'm going to give it a name, external one underscore sub one. I'm going to add it to make that part of the external net, uh, external one network. And give it a 172.25x.0 slash 24 subnet. All right, again, when you see a zero dot something for mine, that's going to be x dot something for yours. All right, so 172.25x.254. 172.25 x.25, x.34, and x.0 at the end. All right, make sure you're not using mine because it won't work. Well, routing will not work for you if you put in my IP address. All right, so let's see what that does. <coughs> so it gave me an allocation pool from 25 to 34. We're using the 172.25.0.0 slash 24 CIDR. Uh, we have a, an IP address there, the dot 254. That's my machine that's gonna do all of our routing. That's our gateway, all right? So we, we're setting this up as a, a subnet at this point, but we do need to set up a, a router. The gateway, uh, the gateway should actually be X as well. Should not be zero, so yours should be you know, X.254. So for each of those, you shouldn't have a zero dot something, it should be an X dot something. And we'll see if this actually works. Oh yeah, we need to do a router ad. Uh, I must have uh, missed something. Neutron router uh, create. So we need to add that there. Neutron router create to create a router named router one. And then that command there about the neutron router gateway set should work. All right, so we created a router. We created a network and subnet. Uh, and then I told it to set the router one gateway as this external one network. All right, and that's the external network that I created before. All right, so have a router, have a network, set it up as a gateway. Should be an external network in order for this to work at all. The router is now connected to the network. Yes, absolutely. And as soon as I created the network, it didn't attach to the router, right? But as soon as I did, exactly, the router wasn't there. When I, so I created the router here, and then this step, I did a router gateway set, router one, external one. So that's the command that said for router one, Add this network, external, uh, what do I call it, external one. 
and make it the gateway, correct. Not only add it as a network to this router, but make it the gateway so things will pass through this if we're doing an external request. Yep, that's exactly right. You got it. All right. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. So, neutron net dash show external one. All right. So, I see that, let's see, external one. It's actually using GRE. Oh, that's something I haven't mentioned yet in this class. Uh, but we set up GRE tunnels. Uh, anytime you do communication between more than one node uh, in OpenStack, you're going to need some sort of protocol like GRE or VLAN or VXLAN or something like that, right? You can't just use local because it's not going to get out. So we chose GRE uh, just to make life simple. Uh, the reason that we chose GRE in our classes is that having something like VLANs to work on physical machines you know, means we have to have a physical router that supports VLANs. We have to have it set up properly. In the classroom, that's a little hard to guarantee uh, to work properly, so we just use GRE to make it simple. Uh, right, we don't care about the underlying network infrastructure. It can be however we want. As long as we can communicate back and forth, we don't care how, how else it's set up. Yeah, that's exactly right. Could be no router at all, absolutely. Yeah, it could be an isolated network. And, yep, and it'll still work because of the OpenStack stuff. All right, yeah, um, so we get to the point, really what this is all about, floating IPs and, and all, right, and this is really where the, the L3 service comes in. Right? This is the ability to provide floating IP addresses and attach them to instances and have them then get out of our gateway. Right? So all of this is part of the L3 service. I want to get that floating IP address. And someone asked me, you know, what is a floating IP address? I don't understand why. Well, a floating IP address is meant as kind of a static IP address, something that's there and available. It's floating because it's not really assigned with an instance uh, unless I want it to be, right? So if that instance goes down, another instance comes up, that floating IP address is associated with the instance. On the instance itself, you're never going to see that floating IP address. If you use an IPA or ifconfig, it's not going to be there. It's just not there because the, the reason we do this floating IP address or the, the way it works is that we're doing some NAT rules and, and some other things like that. Let's say, you know, if I get a request in for this IP address, I want it to route to this virtual machine. All right? And that's, that's where the L3 service comes in. I do that routing and the NAT tables and stuff. The NAT table we set up on the server side. Yep. Yep. And question over here? Can one instance have floating IP addresses from different subnets? Absolutely. Yep, yep, absolutely. So normally what happens when you have multiple subnets on a floating IP, uh, on a, uh, an instance is that you have multiple NICs. You have multiple network cards in the instance. The compute node doesn't have to have no, multiple NICs. No, it doesn't have to. The instance itself, the virtual machine, will be assigned a new NIC because you're doing multiple uh, IP addresses. So, okay. Um, so, if you're doing a floating IP address, it doesn't. It's not really assigned to a NIC at all. It doesn't matter where the NIC is. You have to set up the subnet uh, information in OpenStack. And then you create a floating IP address, like I, uh, I'm about to create a floating IP address. Create a floating IP address, and then you can assign it to a virtual machine. The virtual machine has to have some sort of network device for it to attach to, right? The, the virtual machine itself, yes, that has to have the network card. And that can be, correct, that can be on the neutron server, yep. Yeah, so the question is, where, where is natting actually done, right? And it, it is not in the network namespace. It is outside of that, so it's on the Neutron server that handles all of those requests. So on the server itself, yeah. Okay.
Yeah, so ML2 plugin, what is it? Uh, so it's the newer version of the plugin that allows us to, for instance, it's a much more pluggable architecture. So right now in Neutron, well, with, with Havana, for instance, let's look at the, the older version. With Havana, with, without ML2, we only had the ability to do one type of networking. I could do GRE or VLAN or VXLAN. I could not do all three of those. With ML2 plugin, I can do VLANs, I can do GREs, I can do VXLANs, I can do whatever the next new thing is. So ML2 lets us kind of abstract a layer above where we are now and allow us to have plugins that do VLANs, that do GRE tunnels, that do other things. Uh, the default in Havana, ML2, at least in Red Hat's version of OpenStack, it is not the default, but it's really simple to add and change. Uh, in Icehouse, I believe it is going to be the default uh, for, for generic OpenStack. For VLAN, for VXLAN, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, same sort of thing. With VLANs, right, with VLANs you normally have to have a physical router that does VLANs and you have to have them set up properly and then you tell Open vSwitch about the VLAN tags that you have configured and then it can, you know, basically send the same tags out through your physical network layer. Yep, yep, exactly. Yep, depends on your physical switch. <clears throat> Uh, all right, so, well, we're probably out of time already, but let me just go through quickly here and hit a couple more commands because we're almost finished, actually. Uh, Neutron, correct, I have not created a floating IP yet. I'm going to do that now. <laughs> I was interrupted. <laughs> all right, so, create a floating IP address. There it is. It was that simple. All right, I did a Neutron floating IP create, tell which network to use. External one is our external network, so I have a floating IP address. It was assigned not 26. All right, let's do it again. Oh, I have another one. And I have two floating IP addresses. It is dot .27. It picks up from the pool that I sent. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I look back at my command here, I told it to go from dot .25 to dot .34. Now it started at dot .26. Where did 25 go? Where is dot 25? Yeah, so what happened was, let me see if I've got, <clears throat> going to network namespace, because that's where it's at. IP net NS shows me there's a network namespace, Q router. Q stands for quantum, uh, that's the old name of neutron. All right, so there's a router that is now available in this namespace. And if I do an exec on that namespace, and I can do, uh, let me paste that, there we go. I can do all sorts of subcommands within that network namespace. If I do an IPA, show me the IP address for this in this network space, I see a dot .25, that's where it went. It was assigned to the router. When I did that command that says, add this thing to the router, add it as a gateway, it said, oh, well, I have got to have an IP address for the gateway, so it took this first one, dot .25. And then the floating IP address, 26 was the next one, 27 was the following. So dot .25 is the router IP address. Yep, that is exactly right. So it needs that IP address for the router itself. It is the gateway, yep, that's exactly right. So that's the gateway, that's how I get out from here, out, is through this one, and then it hops through the other gateway that I have. Yeah, yeah, yep, exactly. Okay, uh, let me continue on here quickly. Uh, let's see. Neutron floating IP list shows me the list of IP addresses. Neutron agent list shows me the list of agents that are available in Neutron. And you'll notice that L3 agent, that's the one I just created, that's on server B. But I also have open vSwitch as agents on server X-A and server X-B on both of them. I see that. All right, and finally, a couple more commands here. Neutron 
uh, agent show. And then if I look at the L3 agent ID, all right, so go back to my previous command, L3 agent ID, we'll show it. And it shows me all sorts of cool and interesting things uh, like, let's see, is it using namespaces? Is it, does it have a router? Does it uh, have an external port? You know, where is it running? All of that good stuff. And finally, Neutron, L3 agent, list hosting router, router one. Shows me that server B is the, the, the host that's running it. And Neutron, router, list on L3 agent, and then the ID that I got here. Shows me router one, it's got SNAT enabled, and so there's some more information there. All right, so we're well past time. My apologies for keeping you late, uh, but I hope you got something from this. Uh, so again, this is part of our, some of our new courses that we're uh, putting out about OpenStack. Uh, this is the Neutron Networking on Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform uh, that we have recently, rele recently released. Uh, so I'm going to stick around for questions, uh, although I do have to, we're going to have to kick you out because we've got to clean up and, and put things away. But thank you so much for coming. I hope you uh, have enjoyed our training today. All right. All right.